All right, this is going on page 132. We're going to talk about vectors, okay? How to name them, what the magnitude direction is, all that good kind of stuff. You should have had a basic, basic introduction into vectors in geometry when you were doing translations. Um, and then in physics, I don't know about on-level physics how much you use vectors, but in, in AP physics for sure. Okay, so what a vector is, is a quantity. I know, sounds all fancy, right? <laughs> quantity that has both magnitude yes magnitude which is your size and direction because why oh Oh, yes. Yes, and his name is Vector because in that whole magnitude and direction, yes. It's not just some random, it's not like they misspelled Victor. Like he was the mad scientist, right? Um, all right, so here's your Vector. Vector can be represented geometrically using a directed line segment. Kind of looks like a ray. However, in geometry, if this is a ray, what does that arrow imply? That it goes on forever, right? That is not what's happening here. Uh, vectors have a finite distance, they have a finite length, okay? So that's just showing you the beginning and the end is what that's doing. So you have P, this point here, which looks like the beginning of the ray, but it's not a ray. Um, this is called the initial point. Or the tail. So it's the initial point or the tail. So this is where you start, and it's very, very important because direction matters. Where, whether I'm going from P to Q or Q to P makes a huge difference. And then Q is the terminal point. Or the tip. So you got tip to tail. So that this, this right here is your vector. Okay. This you can't really tell sometimes when this stuff is printed, but that's a it's a lowercase um, bold P, because whether or not it's bold, if if it's not, then you have to have some different notations on it. So it says vectors are denoted using the arrow symbol, which again, kind of looks like a ray, but it's not. <laughs> um, so we've got vector PQ above can be named as vector PQ, or it could be just vector P, or it's got a bolded P. Okay. Yeah, they're little arrows. So it says, given vector V, with initial point x1, y1, and terminal point x2, y2, the magnitude of v is what looks like the absolute value, but it's not. It's a doubled, and it means magnitude, so we actually find the length. And because we can't really write bold, we'll do the little, we'll do the notation, so it looks like this. Um, so that means the magnitude of v. All it is is the distance formula. The distance formula looks like this, square root of. Okay, distance formula comes from Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to write it in pieces here. So Pythagorean theorem, you know, is something squared plus something squared, right? And so to find those distances squared, the first one is x2 minus x1. The second one is y2 minus y1. So the plus goes in between them, minus is on the inside. And if you subtract backwards, it's not even the end of the world because you're going to square it and it fixes the sign anyway. So as long as you don't mix x and y, you're good. All right, so these things that all look like they are line segments, they're not. The, the arrows just didn't really print very well, so just know that they no, don't mean line segments. So it says find the mag magnitude of each vector. Oh, and you know what? I was going to have you get your calculators. Go ahead and go get your calculator. I'm sorry. I know it says no. I forgot to tell you, and I forgot to. All right, so even though you have a calculator, you still have to write stuff down. So the calculator's not doing anything just yet. I'm going to find the magnitude of the vector AB. That's equal to the square root of, right, x2 minus x1. It's going to be negative 7 minus 8 squared plus negative 2 minus a negative 4 squared. Okay. Now, just keep in mind, you should be able to do this with, you should have the skills to do it without a calculator too. Would you agree that you can do it without one? 
Okay, and you need to know how. I mean, I'm gonna let you use one right now, but it's not like this is something that you have to have a calculator for. Like you could do it with that. I'm just gonna make it easier. So on these, you can do it all in one step. You can even substitute it all in exactly like it looks. Careful when you're writing your signs down, when you're using the signs in the calculator. This isn't one where you get to just drop all the negatives because you're squaring it, because you gotta add and subtract things here. And I want this in exact form. And these calculators, the nice thing is it'll give it to you in exact form. The, um, like the 83s will not, and the 84s. Exact form. So what do we get for exact form? Square root of 229 is what you should get. And so since the calculator gave you that and nothing simplified, what does that tell you? It doesn't simplify, yeah, it's, it, that's the best you can do, okay. Just make sure that you get that. Is it always going to give you an exact form? Not always. We'll, we'll talk about it. All right, that's not exact form, sweetheart. That's exact form. Okay, we good? That's it. All right, y'all do number two. Exact form. Ask me questions, and if you didn't get that, let me know so I can make figure out what's going on and help you get it that way. <laughs> Just wait. What you got hating on Trig? I love Trig. Does what matter? All right, what do we get? No. Four square root of five. Watch your signs in here, guys. That's five minus a negative three. Watch your parentheses and your squares and all that good kind of stuff. See, if you didn't get that, then figure out what you did. Now, let's say that I did want this as a decimal. I don't right here. But if I did, what button do I push? SD, SD right above delete. So you can do that right now. It toggles it back and forth. Okay. All right. Now, let's look at number three. We'll do number three together here. We've got the P, we want the magnitude of PQ. That's equal to the square root of 2 minus a negative 8 squared plus negative 9 minus 6 squared. And this time I want it in exact form and to three decimal places. Three. So what'd you get then, Hector? Okay. Yes, I want both of them. So exact form, because this calculator gives it to you, it's nice. There's your exact form and there's your decimal form. Remember, this is your exact form. This is your Home Depot answer. This first one makes you look like a crazy person, but it leaves it exact for as long as possible if you have to do other stuff with it, and you'll have the most accurate measurement in the end. Okay? We good? All right. Y'all do number four on your own if you don't have any questions. If you got questions, you need to speak up. Yes. It won't kill you. You have to have it labeled.
And um, when it gives you the simplified version, like 5 squared to 13, if you toggle through a couple times, it'll give you the full square root, and then it'll give you the reduced one, and then it'll give you the decimal. It'll give you all three of them if you want it for whatever reason. Michael, what'd you get? You done? Good. Square to 29, and then the decimal is what? 5.385. Okay. Y'all agree with that? Yes. yes. Good job. Thank you. Wait, what? What's the question? You got it? Okay. So this minus a minus, I think is, it, it's minus a negative. And since you use the minus sign twice, I think you might have confused it. You have to make sure you use the negative sign. Okay. Does that make sense? I think if you change it. You did them that way too? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, this is a negative six. That's why. It is. No. But you didn't in here, though, babe. Oh. That's why. You threw it off. All right, we good? All right, so there's one definition here before we flip it over. Zero vector. It's a vector what? with magnitude zero. Here you go. There's no link. I know. I have to have a definition. There you go. I know it's a really hard definition, isn't it? All right, let's flip over in the back. Bless you. All right, so we have parallel vectors. Parallel vectors have the same or opposite direction, but not necessarily the same magnitude, meaning that I could have like this. This could be A. This could be B. So they could be parallel. They're not the same length, they're not going in the same direction, but vector A is parallel to vector B. Okay. Equivalent back vectors have the same magnitude and the same direction. So they have to have the same length and they have to be going in the same direction. So these would be congruent. We can call this M and N. And so M is equivalent to N. Then we have opposite vectors. They have the same magnitude, which means they are the same size, but they are going in opposite directions, hence the name opposite vectors. But when you, So when you do this, the vectors are not equal. They are equal but with a negative. So it would be U is equal to negative of the vector V. So if they are opposite vectors, one of them is just the negative version of the other. That's all it is. And we'll, we'll talk about how to actually write vectors out and with numbers and stuff in a little bit. But. Okay. So same magnitude, but opposite directions. It's the opposite, so it's written like this. These are the same magnitude and direction. Those are just parallel. That's all. So we're going to look at this graph. And I know the arrows are kind of tiny, but I think you can see them, at least on your paper, probably easier. Um, and we're going to look at these vectors. So A and E, here's A. Here is E. Okay. Are they the same size? Yes. So they are the same size because I would go to the right two and down one. I'd go to the left two and up one. So they're, they're the same length, but they're going in opposite directions. So they are what kind of vectors? Opposite. I know, it's hard to tell. It kind of, I kind of thought it was an E also at first, so I'm not going to lie. All right, so then we'll look at I and F. So here's I and here's F. Are they the same length? So I would go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and to the right 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and to the right 2. So they are the same length. Now... Now, I just want you to pay attention to the fact that I am counting slope, up 6 and over 2. That tells me they have the same distance. That does not give me the distance. Does that make sense to you? Okay. 
Like, you know, because y'all want to make slope out of everything. Like, yeah, slope helps me know that they're the same, but doesn't give me the answer. Um, and so they are the same direction. They're going in the same direction, and they're the same length. So what are they? Equivalent. Equivalent. Well, they are parallel because they would have the same slope. All right, so then D and E. So here's D. And here's E. Are they parallel? Okay, so even if we go, okay, they look like it, but to know for sure, I would go down two and over one, two, three, four. That's the same as going down one and over two, which is what I did here, so they are parallel. Okay. All right, then B and G. Here's B and G. Equivalent, they have to go in the same distance in the same direction, but it's not. That's nothing. Now, somebody said intersecting. I want you to remember, they don't go any farther than what you see. The arrow does not mean that they continue. If they were raised, they would intersect, but that is not what's happening here. This is just none. They don't have a special classification. They, they make nothing special. All right, then C and H. So this is the C that doesn't really look like a C. And then H, which is right here. Opposite. Are they the same size? Yes, so the, these are opposite. Okay, everybody good so far? Yes? All right, this whole part down here, we are not doing. So move on to the next page. We're not doing that. No, we're not doing it. No matter how much you beg. 133. No, sorry. <laughs> All right, so we are going to look at some other definitions. Standard position. So a vector, listen, a vector can be anywhere on the coordinate plane you want it to be. So here's what I want you to understand, is that these vectors that are on this coordinate plane, I could pick up D, and as long as I don't change the, the slope of it or make it longer, and I could like put it over here, and it's still vector D. The location doesn't mean anything. Y'all aren't listening. The location means nothing. It's just uh, we could put it anywhere as long as it's the same distance and same direction. So if they are, if it is in a certain position, then that's a different thing. Standard position, okay? It is when the initial point of a vector is at the origin. All right, so it says if a vector v is in standard position with a terminal point at ab, so here's my vector, the initial point is at the origin, it doesn't always have to be, but you kind of always want to think of it in that manner. If you can think of it in that manner, it makes everything easier. So here's this, and then the terminal point would be this ordered pair ab, okay? If that's true, then the component form of vector v looks like this. v is equal to, these are pointy brackets, okay? Not curvy ones, those mean something else. If it's a parenthesis, that means it's an ordered pair that's a point you plot. This is A comma B. We're not talking about a point. No. It is not the point AB. This is the vector AB. The X quantity is A, the Y quantity is B. So I would go to the right A and up B, just like I would to plot that point, but that gives me the vector. It does not give me like just one point out of it, okay? So that's why you have to know what that means when you see these little things. Should have learned that in geometry. So the magnitude and direction angle theta of a vector give the component form, in the component form can be found using the following. So to find the magnitude, if I want the magnitude, this right here is A, this, right, this length right here is B. The magnitude is the length of that. Can't I just do Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, so basically it looks like this. Um, magnitude of V is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Yeah, so this is a lot like r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared that we just did with the uh, polar stuff. Exactly, it's exactly the same thing. And tangent of theta, what is tangent of theta equal? Yes, you are right. It is sine over cosine. For this triangle specifically, though, what would I say? B over A. It's opposite over adjacent, so it's B over A. Okay. 
Everybody okay with that? We good? All right, so it says find the magnitude and direction for each vector. So let's do that. I want to find, so this right here, it's a vector that has this component form. This is my A, this is my B. So the magnitude of vector R is equal to the square root of 7 squared plus 24 squared. So what is the magnitude of R then? You should know your perfect square is up to 25. Makes your life a lot easier in calculus, I'm telling you. Actually, this is a lot of things. You could do this. Five seventy-six. <laughs> so it's just twenty-five, yeah, because it's forty-nine plus five seventy-six. So it's a square to six twenty-five, which is twenty-five. But you have the calculator. There. All right. So then we five seventy-six. So then tangent theta. So this is one thing that they asked me for. But then I also have to find the direction. So tangent theta is equal to twenty-four over seven. That's not an angle that you know, right? I get that. So even if that did reduce, you don't have to. Let the calculator do everything. So this is theta equals the tangent inverse of 24 over 7. But before you start punching buttons, this is, um, well, we don't have to do it in degrees, I guess. Um, I was just, I was just thinking, it doesn't have to be degrees, but um, let's do degrees just for the heck of it. So um, put, make sure your calculator's in degrees. If you're not sure, or even if you are, push these buttons with me just to make sure. You do shift mode, which is right next to on, and then choose three. Shift mode three. Gradients, it's another way to look at angles. Yeah, gangster. Gangster radians, that's what they are. Shift mode three. So if you need to put it back in radians, you do the same thing. So then you take the tangent inverse. But here's the catch to this stuff, guys. You have to pay attention to which quadrant you're in. If this is in standard position and I have a positive seven and a positive 24, that is in quadrant what? One. So everything's positive in quadrant one. So whatever you get out of there, it's totally fine, right? So then you get theta to three decimal places is what? 73.740. Can't take the calculator home. I'm sorry. All right, we're gonna do number two together. You can rinse it. I told you how to get them cheap. They're, the price keeps going up every time I look at it. Um, yeah. So the magnitude of n is equal to the square root of negative three squared plus negative one squared. So just for the heck of it, let's use our brains instead of the calculators. Um, what's negative three squared? 9 plus negative 1 squared is 1, so this is just the square root of 10. Sometimes it's just easier to use your brain. Okay? Yeah. All right, so then the tangent of theta is equal to negative 1 over negative 3, okay? Which is just 1 third, so theta is equal to the tangent inverse of 1 third. So get the answer to that in your calculator, and then let's talk about what, whether or not that number you get is what we get to use. Okay, so what did you get? 18.435, okay, so that angle is where? In which quadrant? Well, that angle that you got out of the calculator, it's in quadrant one. The calculator gave you quadrant one angle. This is in quadrant three, right? So I have, because it's, because when you go to, if you, negative, negative, you're in quadrant three. So this 18 degree angle that you have, it's right here. We want it right here. What can we do to that number? Add 180. You just go, add 180. So add 180 to it, and you get that theta is equal to 198.435. So make sure you pay attention to the quadrant. That is, gets ignored all the time, and it just makes your answer totally wrong, okay? We good? Any questions? Yay, it's fun. All right, y'all do number three. I'm having all kinds of fun.
No, he's not. Go ahead. This time, give me the um, the magnitude in exact and in decimal form, just for the heck of it. Oh dang! All right. So it's four square to thirteen to three decimal places. That's yep. I said I wanted it both on this one. All right, we good with that? Then we got to do the rest, so go ahead and keep working if you don't have that yet. All right, so what quadrant is this in? Quadrant four. Okay. Well, you can, no, you can reduce it if you want to, but my suggestion is that you don't. Just because sometimes even when it's easy, have you ever done like something easy and you reduced it wrong because you just made it, yeah. So I, if, since the calculator's gonna do it, it's safer just let the calculator do it. It's not wrong if you reduce correctly, but you know, you don't wanna shoot yourself in the foot, it's not good. Okay, so what the calculator gives you is what? 56, blah, 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 right? So we know this is in, the, is in quadrant four. This is a quadrant four angle, but I don't want it to be negative. So what can I do with that number to get the positive version? Yeah, if I just add 360, basically it ends up being so, yeah, I know what you meant. So if you do that, yeah, I got it. Hey, stop it. Y'all yeah. are being childish now. See, I don't know, I'm so sorry. So we get 303 point what? 310? Degrees. We've forgotten. We good? Okay. All right, y'all do number four. Actually, never mind. Let's go to the back. Wait, did I do it wrong? I just listened to what they ha said. I don't have it right. Oh. Oh, it's 303 point, yeah. Six what? Six nine? Six nine zero. I don't know where I heard three one zero. <laughs> He's not that stupid. Is that right? That's right, right? I don't have it to three decimal places on here. All right, let's flip it over on the back. All right. So if you're given two points, if you're given an initial point and a terminal point, and so this is not necessarily starting at the origin, then the component form for the vector can be written as x2 minus x1 comma y2 minus y1. Basically, it's just finding the differences in the x's and the y's, okay? But here, the order matters. The initial point has to be x1, y1, and the terminal point has to be x2, y2. Almost every single time you use things like that, it doesn't matter, like you get the same thing in the end, whether it's slope or whatever. But it makes a difference here, because it would make your uh, vector point in the opposite direction, and that's bad. Okay, so here, when it tells you that CD, this is your vector, this is your initial point, and this is your terminal point, every time. So they're in already in order. It's the, you know, X1, Y1, then X2, Y2. So the actual vector itself then would be, I take six minus three, and three minus five. So the vector is three, negative two. That means I can start from anywhere on the coordinate plane, make a point, go to the right three and down two, and that's my vector. It gives me distance and direction. It does not give me location. Okay, so y'all do number eight. Huh? No, I want you, you should be doing number eight. Oh, I put the vector V. I should have named the other one R. Okay. 
Good. All right. That's what I got for number eight. Y'all agree with that? All right. So now look at number 10. Yeah, I'm copying. Number 10, it asks for the component form, the magnitude and the direction. So you want component form first, because that's how you're going to get the magnitude and the direction out of it. This is vector AB, right? So find the component form like you just did. Do y'all agree with that? <coughs> Bless you. Okay, and then you were going to find the um, magnitude and direction, just like you did on the front, now that you have the component form. It's okay if you're wrong. Negative one minus, wait, what's the question? Negative one minus a negative three. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's, got it, go. those signs will get you every time. All right, so what do we get for the magnitude? Square root of 173, which is about 13.153. So square root of 173, oh gosh, I can't write. Square root of 173, which is about 13.153. All right, so then find the angle. No. What quadrant are we in? Okay. So we're, this is in quadrant two. So when you do that, you take the tangent inverse, 2 divided by negative 13. Hmm. Yeah, you get negative 8 something, right? So that negative 8, you are down here in the fourth quadrant. You, you're going to add 180 to get over there, okay? So we add 180 to that, and we get 171.254 degrees. What, what's the question? Oh, did I do that? Oh, because the angle they get, the angle the calculator gave me, it gave it to me in the fourth quadrant, but I want to be in the second quadrant. So I have to take that fourth quadrant angle they gave me and add 180 to it to get me to the second quadrant. Yeah. We good? All right, so now let's look at number 12. Oh, go ahead. No, because I'm... If I'm rotating, I mean, I could rotate either way. If I subtract from a negative number, I'm going to get a more negative number. I would still end up in the second quadrant, but I want it to be the positive angle. Does that make sense to you? So I have to go 180 this way, so I'm adding 180 instead of subtracting. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so look at number 12. This is on the coordinate plane, but here's this ordered pair. This is negative 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this ordered pair is negative 1, 4. This order pair is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay. But that vector 
I mean, those ordered pairs tell me where a location is, but the component form doesn't have anything at all to do with that. The component form gives me an X value, and that's the A, and then the Y value. So this component form here, I go to the right, one, two, three, four, five, and then I go down, one, two, three, so that's a negative three. Going to the left or down would be negative, right and up is positive, just like, so this graphing just counted. Okay, does that make sense? And then if you can do the rest of this stuff because it's the same calculations. I just wanted to make sure you understood on the graph. All right, so let's look down here. This is really, really easy. It says vectors are equivalent if and only if they have the same component form. So it says use component forms to determine whether they are equivalent. So AB, vector AB is equal to negative 7 minus a negative 3, oops, and then comma, negative 2 minus 6, so that gives me a negative 4, negative 8. Negative 4, negative 8. We good with that? So then I do CD. That gives me negative 1 minus 3, negative 9 minus a negative 1, and that's equal to negative 4, negative 8. Therefore, AB is equivalent to CD. Easy enough? Because you, you get the exact same component form, even though the points are in different places. All right, so you do number 14. It's okay. I was just wanted to make sure I got them all done in case. And I'm going to go ahead and give this to you in case you don't show back up tomorrow. But um, we will basically just be working on this in class and making sure you understand it all. Better not be lost. No, they're going to regular classes. No. Listen. Too bad. <laughs> Hey, did y'all do this last one? You got it all done? I don't believe you. Write it out. Huh? No. I know, but I, you need to know notation. I bet. I, do you, what do you have written for the no? How do you have it written? See, you don't even know how to write it. Work the dang problem. Not this part. The the final answer. Come on, boy. It's nine negative six. Okay, so I get nine negative six and 9, 6. So are they equivalent? Nope. No. So then I have to say yeah. vector AB is not equivalent to vector CD. Mm -hmm. See? We had to get to the answer to know that they weren't. It is easy, which means you better do the work, right? On the assignment, the, we skipped part of the notes on the first one, so you're going to, 9 and 10 on the front, you're going to omit, and I'll remind you of that tomorrow. But that goes with the, that goes with the first part of, that, that part of the notes we skipped, okay? Of course, if you get started on this tonight, you can get questions answered tomorrow and actually get all this 100% done. But I'm going to expect this at the end of the period tomorrow, so you have, we'll have plenty of time if you get on it. Still? I thought the state put an end to that.